That's gonna be a good episode. And with me today, Vila Bianca. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for coming down. You're not Jamie. I am not Jamie. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're sitting in today. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. It is October 13th, 2019, season three, episode 41. Wow. This has been a really, 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 really big week. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, you've got some stuff going on. Yeah, I got some stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, so personal stuff aside, uh, I'm going to be gone next weekend because I'm going to be at my one and only little sister's wedding and I'm excited because that means my mom will stop asking me for grandbabies. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's that's always, that's good. That is good. That's been looking forward to that. I appreciate my five younger siblings for that reason. <laughs> and and her, her, her to-be partner uh, is wonderful. Um, uh, he's a really nice guy and I'm just stoked. I'm stoked. I'm, I'm stoked to welcome him into the family. Um, on show news, so uh, I got a call um, two days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know because I called you screaming. <laughs> um, uh, so so Matt calls me and he goes, uh, "Hey Eric, uh, I'm, I'm I'm actually I won't be able to host the atheist experience this Sunday. Uh, could you fit it? Could you fill in?" And then I'd act really really cool. I was like, "Yeah." Yeah, Can I, I check could, my calendar. Make I sure could, I don't have anything going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going to be doing back-to-back -back shows today. Yep. Uh, Talk Heathen and the Atheist Experience. And I'm kind of excited about that because the lens that I run things through for Talk Heathen is, you know, it's patient. It's it's much more, you know, uh, slow and and has that feel. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be able to cut loose later, and I'm excited about it. Okay. So that said, um, anything going on in your world? Um, just lots of work, and then for a break, I do more work, <laughs> and then but, some more work. But you're working on a book. I'm working on a book. Mm -hmm. I'm working on several other people's books. Um, just got promoted at work. Which Congratulations. Is so yeah, just I just switch switch gears and do all of the work. And well, dig it. Yeah, I'm glad we get to steal you away at least once a week. I I leave Sundays open. Good, good. <laughs> um, so with that out of the way, I don't think there are any other major announcements. In the back, are there any other major announcements? No? Then let's dive right into calls. Let's do it. How about John in Alabama, who was our first caller? Uh, John, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? Really well. The caffeine is starting to kick in, and I am, I am ready to go. What did you want to talk about today? I have a very interesting story I would like to share with you, and maybe you can pr provide me with some answers. Well, I, I, so, I, so here's 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 the 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 thing that pops into my mind right away. Um, some people call with stories, and they just talk at me for like fifteen minutes, and it it's never interesting. Um, so. I would be happy to engage with you and talk about something. And, you know, if you had an experience, I'd love to talk about it. But as long as we can engage about it, I'm good. That's fine. I'll make it short. Okay. And this is Bible-related, and I'll make it short, and it's happened to me in real life, okay? Okay. I went to church as a kid because my, my parents made me. Okay. And I grew up hearing about the gospel and all that, okay? So, but I really wasn't sure, okay? But but you knew and about I, the Jesus I, story. You knew about right, the Right, and I accepted sacrifice. the Lord and all as my Savior, and I continued on in life, but I still wasn't really positive sure, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now the, uh, on up in years, now till today, I bought a house. I was living in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I moved down here to Alabama about mm -hmm. six months ago. And I got me another, uh, when I moved into my new house, about a week or two after I was here, I was sitting on my couch watching TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my two liter Coke bottles that I had bought from the Dollar General store was sitting on a stand by my wall by the door. Okay. And as I was sitting here watching TV, the Coke bottles rose up off the table. We're talking two-pound Coke bottles now, full of Coke, two liters. Okay. Rose up off the table, and they went all the way across my house in front of my face. And then they went back, 
and they did that about seven times, and it scared me to death. So, and the only thing, and I knew it was not human related. Ow. So the only thing I knew to do, to do was cry out and start praying, and so I did. Mm-hmm. And I asked it to leave in Jesus' name. The Coke bottle fell out of midair, and it left, and it has not been back. My question is if religion, if the right religion is fake, why did Jesus' name make it leave? Because it seems to have power in that name. And why, what in the world can pick up a two-liter Coke bottle and move it back and forth in front of my face? in my house when I'm the only one here, and you can't see it. And I found, I told my friend about this that lives right next door to me. Mm -hmm. And he told me that his first wife practiced witchcraft, and she did not do the bad witchcraft. She did the good witchcraft for the, that would bring on good finances and, Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I believe she brought something through the gate or whatever it is, and to this, to here, and somehow it got in my house. But I seen that with my own eyes. I didn't read it in a book. I I didn't hear about it. That happened to me in my house. John? Uh Uh-huh? Do you know what a Poe is? A what? Okay, good. Um, I don't know what a Poe is. I'm glad. Um, So, John... Wow. Um, I have so many places. I don't know where to start. Um, well, first off, I want to say thank you for calling in. And I am happy to talk to you about this. Uh, second, how long did this phenomena occur for? Was this like a, you know, uh, so fast that Coke bottles were ready to explode, they were shaking, moving, but, or was this like a 10-minute floating Coke bottle thing? Okay, it was, it, it just a matter of minutes. It, okay. It would pick up and move across. Sure. The, do you have a camera phone? It kind of slow, and then it would go back and sit down. Yeah. Do you have a camera phone? And then it would repeat. It would repeat that every every few minutes. It okay. would just like do that on its own. Do you have a camera phone? No. I mean, I got one, but I didn't expect this to happen. I mean, well, but I if didn't it was con- to happen at all, if it was continuing, I would, I would have taken a picture at least. I was scared to death. I didn't know. I was sitting here shocked, scared to death. I, I've, I've, I've got, got to, I've got to tell you, I got man. Stuff floating in front of my face, and I'm like, yeah, oh, John. John. Wow. And the only thing I could think about when I seen okay. that floating in front of my face, the only thing I could think about was my days in church and what the Bible said, and 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 that's the only thing I could think about, man. That's the only thing that come to my I, mind. I, I guess got thought I was programmed or something. I I absolutely agree. There's programming there, mm-hmm. um, John. So, I mean, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. My mind. Hold on, hold on. Um, so before we dive into the nuts and bolts, I want to make sure that I've okay. got this right because I think on its face, it is amazingly silly. Um, so in the in the um, the notes, it says that you uh, call this a demonic spirit. That's the only thing I can think of it being. My neighbor was practicing witchcraft. Sure. So, and in the Bible, that's what it relates to is, you know, so, as, a, a, as a demonic spirit okay. or some kind of spirit. That's John, the only thing I can relate to. And, and it and was trying John, to scare me away or something because, and it's, you know, I, I was a believer or something. I don't know. Okay. So, you're, so you say you experienced this thing, right? Yes, sir. And you are jumping to a conclusion that you feel is most likely. And the conclusion that you feel is most likely is that a demon that's invisible popped Mm -hmm. into existence next door. And what it did is it went into your house and decided it wanted to scare you out of your house by picking up Coke bottles and floating them in front of you and then putting them back down. Is that correct? That is the most likely explanation. That's the only thing I know how to relate to it because right. I know it wasn't human. I so, know it wasn't an invisible man. John? So, I mean, I, I know it was something of not of this world, of human. Really? I Be- know it was something in the spiritual world. And John, the only thing that John, I can relate John, to is... Uh, John, okay? 
buddy, dude, um, um, I, I want to talk with you, and I, I don't want to take turns talking at each other. I, I heard okay. you. I, I want to engage. I do. Okay. Okay. So, um, first off, uh, I don't even know where to... Okay, so uh, you, you're coming at this from a Christian mindset, first off. Um, you, you know, you're, you're plugging this in with the information that you, uh, were taught, you were taught that there are spirits, you were taught that those were demonic, that there's an evil realm and that there, that all of that stuff exists. I don't know a, a whole lot about witchcraft, but I actually do have a friend who's got a pretty good knowledge of what that kind of, are demons getting summoned from hell a thing? Um, that's more of a Christian assumption of what happens, honestly. That's okay. not, it's... So, but, but I, I mean, I'm not saying that there's a phenomena that happens, but I'm right. saying, are there people who identify themselves as witches mm -hmm. who go, hey, I'm going to summon a demon from hell? There are. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Am I, I'm the only one. I'm the only, okay. No, this is, I've always wanted to live in this universe. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, let us I, okay, put that out there. For sure. They say so. All right, John, I believe that you believe this. I, 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 I don't think you're a Poe. A Poe is somebody who is messing around. Um, it's just, it, it's so close on the border of silly that I have to make sure that it's not a joke. <laughs> um, I and promise you it's not a joke. I, I would not waste my time on the phone with you if it was. I, and I appreciate you calling in. So, John, um, I understand that something happened that you can't explain, right? No, sir. I can't explain it. Okay. The only thing I can do is relate to the Bible. Okay. So, why are you giving an explanation if you can't explain it? Because when I told it to leave in Jesus' name, it left. I... How did you, how did you come to the conclusion that those things were related? How did you come to the conclusion that you weren't sleeping? Because it says Jesus cast out demons and they're scared of the name of Jesus and they flee from him. And, and there's events in the Bible where they cast out demons and all that stuff. So that's why I told the Spirit to leave in Jesus' name. I read, it's the only thing yeah, I knew to do. I read the Bible. I know the Bible very well. I've been a Christian and for it, most of my life. I, it. I hear you. That's not an answer to my question. The question... Okay. Is, Repeat it. Sure. If you do not have an explanation for a thing, what you did is jump onto what you think the explanation is. Right? Okay. How did you rule out dreaming? Dreaming? Yeah. Because I'm not crazy and I wouldn't have... Whoa! Do you think only crazy people uh, have hallucinations or have uh, vivid dreams? I have never in my life seen something like this, okay? And I have. I've, I, I, you watch movies, don't you? Yes. Okay. Have you seen movies where things float because of ghosts? That's Hollywood fake stuff, man. That's not real. Um, but so you're saying you were saying I don't have like a an experience well to draw from here where that would be a thing. You obviously no, do. Sir. You obviously related it to Hollywood fake stuff. I no, agree. Sir. It's Hollywood fake stuff. I'm asking you how you've determined that it's not a dream or it's not a hallucination. I know it wasn't a dream for a you, fact. For a fact. It was in the middle of the day, and I don't see things. I don't do drugs and stuff. You don't have I to. I don't hallucinate. I don't see things. It was real. Okay. V? Um, so, John, I think the issue here is, for me at least, is less, okay, I, for the sake of this argument, I will say, sure, you saw this happen. You weren't asleep. Something happened. I actually also have seen weird shit. I was working in a haunted inn for a while as a, a younger person. And um, everybody in that entire inn was terrified of ghosts. Um, and people could get off of doing jobs because they were scared of the ghosts. It was, it was, it was okay. fun to use as an excuse. Um, I did not. However, one time I was in the laundry room, right, doing some laundry, and one of the little detergent cups flies off the shelf, ricochets around the room, and falls down. I was the only person in there. I have no idea what happened. As far as okay. I know, I was awake. 
But I'm not going to go and say, oh, I know that that was the ghost of the Confederate soldier who accidentally shot somebody um, uh, in the, the, the inn, because that, that was the story. Yeah, but no. This happened uh, seven times, and it went back and forth, back and forth. And I'm talking yeah. about seven, eight, nine foot wide, went back and forth floating in the air. We're not talking about one quick incident. There's definitely no possible explanation. Long enough for me to take a film of it if I had a camera. Um, So you do have a camera. I said if I had like a movie camera. You don't have. I had it set up. Can can your camera phone take video? I filmed it. Can your camera phone take video? It's just a little track phone. It ain't worth nothing. It's a little Dude, prepaid phone. I would have run screaming into the street getting people in there. I would have grabbed a camera, <laughs> uh, anything to show this. Right now, what you have is something that, unfortunately, is there's no way to show that that's what happened. There's absolutely no way. And that, that that's really sad because... How can you investigate it? It sounds like you didn't take any time to investigate it. You jumped to this is the conclusion. And, it happened um, so fast. I didn't know it what happened. To you do said it happened every few minutes. Anything. Which one? Huh? You said it happened every few minutes. That That is an event that takes place over, you know, if seven times. Seven times back and forth. And if it's a few huh. minutes between each, we're talking about 15 five minute minutes. Event, and it was one o'clock in the morning. Everybody's asleep. I can I mean, get my neighbors in five minutes. I, I can get a camera neighbor. in five minutes. Wait, you said it was the middle of the day. Not it was one in the, the middle of the... It was 1 a.m. at night. No, you said earlier it was in the middle of the day. You said you couldn't have been asleep because it was... Well, I didn't mean day. daylight as in day outside. 1 a.m. is the next day because it's after 12. Yeah. I didn't, it, was, it was a.m. in the morning. I didn't mean like daylight when it was light outside and all that. My neighbor is asleep. I'm the only one home. It's moving around in front of my face, and I'm scared to death. I didn't know John, what to do. John. Uh-huh. Um, so I want to ask you a few questions epistemically. I want to ask you a few questions because uh, I want to have a better idea of how you think about things. So um, this, okay, is, th- this is related. Um, All right. Do you, so you obviously believe in demons, right? That's what it says in the notes. Right? Is that is that correct? You believe in spirits or things that you know manifestations that can invisibly interact with this world in a in a in a cognizant way, right? Y- yes, I do. Okay. Um, um, do you understand that other cultures have different belief systems that they use that um, are run in contradiction to yours? No, I don't. I don't study other cultures. Okay. You. I don't. I don't really study other cultures. I just live my life and don't mess with nobody. And yeah. And and I was just sitting here, and this happened to me, and I, I don't. scared me to death. Right. And I did the only thing I know to do, and it worked. So I'm so, like, wow. If it was a fairy tale, then it wouldn't have left. So it must be real. So here's, here's the interesting thing. Um, I know that there are people who are saying, okay, this person is, is pulling your leg, Eric. Uh, you know, it's, move on because this person is, is, uh, is obviously messing with you. Um, I do know people who have talked to me in the same way that you're talking to me about something like this, mm-hmm. right? Um, the answer to an unexplained event is it's unexplained. Um, but for you to say, okay, I believe in, you know, this Christian God, then the thing to do is say, okay, um, what are its qualities? How can we test it? How can we determine that it's real? Uh, you jumped right past that. So let's try this line of thinking. What if that is, are just the words you say, but there actually isn't a Jesus. That's just that those, that those things are unrelated. Just like abracadabra, when you say in Jesus' name, it goes away. All I know is it made the ghost leave. If no, wait, I, I, it's, I, a, I, it's I, a ghost now? Well, what it, whatever was moving them Coke bottles stopped the second I, John, I said it and left. John, I asked you a question. I didn't ask you to tell me all I know. I asked you a question because I want to know what you think about it. I want you to think and stop telling me I stopped thinking. So... 
how have you determined that in Jesus' name is not a spell, is not just its own unique thing that causes events like that to stop? I don't understand your question, sir. How did I determine that that Jesus' name would, would cause stuff like that to stop? Is that what you're saying? So, so what I'm saying is if we're going to be investigating events, right, okay. if we, then what we need to do is we need to come up with uh, explanations. And I'm following you through a ton of this. I am, I am, I'm taking a ton of this on so that I can meet you here at this place because I want to give you something useful. I do. Okay. Um, that is, that is the reason I'm still on this call is because I want to give you something useful here. Um, maybe another way to phrase it would be, how do you know that it's not just the act of speaking anything at all that made it go away? Why, why, what could you have said hamburger and it would have stopped? Because if we're throwing out be, hypotheticals. Because my neighbor said that he has seen things in his house and they are still there in his house. And no matter what, he, he, he's a, he's an atheist. He don't believe in God. And no matter what he says to them, there, he says he still sees them. And I thought, you know, I've even asked his children, and they said that cool. they've seen this stuff in so, his house. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, you are obviously in a very, very, uh, uh, if this stuff happens, get a video, call in, send us the video. We will play the video. I want to know. If you have evidence, it sounds like you do have evidence available, call in with it. Don't just say, I experienced a thing. Get a camera. Yeah. Keep yeah. it on you. Yeah. Get, your, get your atheist neighbor to set some cameras up in his house, too. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Yes, I'll, I've only, you know, I'll, it, well, it hasn't happened again in my house. Well, then go to your neighbors. I'll, 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 I'll talk to him. His name's Joe. I'll, I'll talk to Joe Perfect. And, and see if he'll let me do that, and I'll do it. Okay. Perfect. But if, see, if, I, 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 didn't, I didn't call in to get attention no, and, but, and all that. No. I, I called to just I, ask the question and see if you could give me an answer. Sure. You, you uh, want... If it's something other than Jesus, which had, you know. Right. Um, and basically where we're at is literally anything, um, literally anything. Uh, the most likely explanation for something like that is that it happened in your head. Um, but that's because we live in a world where that happens in people's heads and we have experienced okay. that and talked to people who've done that. Okay. Well, let, let me ask you this. Every time, hold on a second, hold on. Every time we have come up with video of a thing floating, just like you said, it's turned out to be Hollywood nonsense or, right? right? So... Out of all of the available explanations, the one you gave is not available because you haven't even shown that it's a thing. And so right. you, you've taken so many right. steps forward that I think that where we're trying to help at this point is we just want you to investigate the world around you more. Right. And so if you can do that, I would call this a worthwhile call. Right. Okay. I'll try to do that for you, buddy. Good. But, you know, in, in, in my heart, I know what I've seen, and that's my answer. I know it's real. Okay, that is a stupid but, idea, but John. Let, hold on. Let, let me ask. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Um, I, I, I am going to respect you as a person, because you as a person okay. deserve respect. The idea of okay. believing something only because it feels good in your heart is okay. horrible. Horrible. Okay. Can, can you think of any other okay. situation where somebody believes something in their heart and does something terrible? I don't know. A school shooting. Or, um, you know, uh, 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 massacres hurting people or, you know, beating uh, your spouse or hitting your children. Or maybe it's, um, you, you know, going to war. Maybe it's, you know, because I believe in my heart, uh, this thing, yep. I'm going to deny somebody the right to marry the person that they love because they just believe it in their heart. John, there are so many reasons why people believe things in their heart that makes this world a fucked up place that I think you'd have to show a good reason for that to ever be the case that you accept something to be true. And I challenge you, so John, find more Jesus reasons than I believe leave. it in my heart. The name Jesus made him, that entity, leave. So that tells me it's oh. real. And, and, and I believe it. And repeating yourself tells me you were waiting for your turn to talk. John, investigate the world around you, and um, I hope to hear from you again. Yeah, send us that video. Yes. All right, bye-bye. I will try to get my friend Joe 
to see if he will do that, okay? I can't make you any promises. I, I, I hope, I hope that you, you take this as, a, as an opportunity to explore and learn about the world, learn about what other cultures think about these things because it will only serve to teach you more about the world. There's nothing wrong with education. All right, take care, man. Okie dokie. Off, off to a good start, I'd say. I'm, I'm gonna bask in this, my That's, goodness. That was, yeah. Wow! (laughs) So, at that point, there's not enough to settle into to have, like, a starting place. Right. Exactly. I I mean, at at an episode, at at a level where we investigate the world around us, we have started in completely different places, Mm -hmm. right? If I were to have that kind of experience, the first thing I would do is call a doctor. Right. Um, and if, if all of that is, I would desperately want, that would become my obsession at that point, is figuring out what the heck it is. Um, and it just, even if you accept that to be the case, you're still cutting yourself off from learning about the world. And what a sad thing that is. Um, I, I, I just... I needed to be reminded that, that people like him exist. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I want to, I want a sitcom about this atheist and his witchcraft doing wife just living in a house where things fly around all the time. That oh my gosh, awesome. that'd be amazing, yeah. Right? I'm just like, oh, I want to, I want to meet these people. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I can't. I just can't. Okay. Um, Steve from Alabama. You're talking Hello. to Eric and V. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, Steve. I'm all right. <clears throat> what would you uh, like to talk about? Because I am well, uh, off in left field right now. <laughs> Bring me back, Steve. Okay. Well, well the, first que- the first question I have is, do you believe in life after death? No. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, is, do, you th- do you believe that, that life is, is something like a dream? Then? No. I mean, no. when I wake up from, when I wake up, in the mornings, my dreams are over. They're done. Mm-hmm. And so when, when you die, you think that life is just, that's it, it's over? Yeah. Yes. So then life isn't real. No. No. It is. Life is not real. Uh, no. Steve, did you have okay. breakfast this morning? Sure. Did, are you still eating breakfast? Is breakfast still happening? Uh, well, no. Okay. It was your breakfast real? But the food was real. Right. The food was real. Yeah. The food is real. Exactly. Right. It's still real. Ag- agreed. And that, I mean, yeah. So, so let's 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 break this down a little bit because I feel like it's kind of flying a little bit. Uh, so, first off, well, life not, after death. I'm not death. saying that it that that life is 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 a dream. I'm not. That's not what I'm trying to. It's no, not no, no, no. Life is an imagination. No, I I, I want to dig I'm into this life after death. Doesn't have any value. Okay. I think is what you're going. Value, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. So so let's talk about value first off, and then let's talk about the soul, because those are two okay. things that are incredibly important to me. I think the soul is much easier to start with. Um, okay. I challenge you to give me one characteristic of a soul that you can show me one of a soul yes well okay does Uh, does it have a personality are there preferences it has potential i I mean i i see life as life is the soul um a person i mean that's we we that's the same one and the same thing i think I don't, because when you're talking about a soul, um, generally, when, 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 you're, when you're talking about what we culturally understand as a soul, you're talking about something that is completely, entirely separate from the body that operates the body or is a necessary component of a body, correct? Okay, okay. right. Okay, so... Well, the, the, only, the only thing that, I mean, nobody, we do, the, the, it's not physical. It's a non-physical, I mean... We're talking about, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't tell you anything about it, I guess. Okay, I mean, so, so... Other than it's not physical. Okay, so um, you couldn't tell me anything about it. It's not physical. Other than it's not physical. But you know it exists. 
No, I don't know it. I don't know it. I believe it, but I don't know it. I mean, I, you know, there's, there's no proof of anything. I mean, how do you, how do you check? something that's not physical. There's no way to detect it in any way. Well, so there, there are abstract concepts that exist that are not physical, right? So we can talk about numbers, and just because we talk about the number one does not mean that there is a physical one in existence somewhere because we're talking about it. It's an idea. It's, a, it's a, something that we create to be able to understand things, right? Um, so we can absolutely understand things that aren't real in that way, but... In that, exact, in that exact example, that number one does not exist in an actual physical sp space, right? Um, so when you're okay. talking about the idea of a soul, you're putting all of these things out. And you're, you're saying, you know, um, that, that it is necessary. And yet, when asked, you're unable to give any indication or way. It, it's, it's indefensible. I, I mean, so let's... Do you know what falsifiability is? Yeah, I understand the concept of okay. falsifiability. Okay. It's something that, that can't be tested. Well, yeah, well, close enough. Um, so what you've given is an unfalsifiable claim. Is there a way to falsify that claim? No. Well. There's not. People have tried. Uh, there are people who have weighed bodies before and after death to see if there's a yeah. detectable difference in the weight of a soul, right? Yeah. Um, we've explored yeah. traumatic brain injuries uh, where people yeah. have had major things happen to their brains and all of these things that we think are cornerstones of who we are have changed, right? You are not your, you know, the, your favorite ice cream, Um those things change. The way you treat people, all of those things have been mapped to physical things in your body. And so what you're left with is nothing left to give to a soul. There's, there's nothing there. And if there's absolutely nothing there and there's no explanation for it and there's no way to prove it, then why believe it? Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it it, the question is, is life real, though? Is it real? Is, is it real? Well, so, so that's, that's a little bit different, and I'm happy to go in, into that. Um, I just want to close the chapter on talking about the soul first. So we'll put a pin in that because I, I'm, I'm not trying to get you off track, um, but I do want to ask you, what is left for the soul? Why would you believe something if there's nothing, nothing there? I mean, there's more reason to believe the Loch Ness Monster because at least we could say the Loch Ness Monster looks like this and has behaved like this and is in this, this lake. Well, that, that's one. Well, okay. Uh, there again, I mean, it's, it, you, if you can't, there's no, way, there's no way to test for it. You're right. I mean, it, there's, there's nothing that you can do, nothing that can be looked at. Mm -hmm. Nothing, that, no test, or it, it is no way of knowing mm -hmm. so, in any way, shape, or form so why there is a soul. So why accept it at all, Steve? Because life and the soul are tied together. Well, so, okay. I believe. Is it possible? I believe that. Right? I'm, I'm going to give you nihilism here. Um, is it possible that you exist in this universe without cause, without a uh, distinct purpose, and that when you die, it's over? Is that possible? I think there is a purpose for every life. I'm not asking you about purpose. For, every, for I, I, everything that's alive. But cool. is it possible? That's, that's a great philosophy. I asked you, is it possible? We're looking at the table it, of things to choose from. Okay, I'm asking yeah, you if that's it, on the I table. Guess, I guess you could say, I mean, uh, you can't, I can't say any, nothing is, uh, is, is impossible. Sure I you guess. can. I mean, yeah, is no. it possible? Well, no, uh, it, so, so that's, that's, there's this idea that, oh, well, if, uh, if it wasn't designed, it had to be random. No. Um, I can jump off my balcony 10,000 times and I'm going to hit the floor every single time. There's not going to be one time where I'm going to fly away like Superman. There are things You're that right. we can determine are impossible, right? Uh, when, when we talk about morality, uh, the example that I've given is that in a given situation, there are only so many things you can do. You're standing out inside, outside of a burning house. You can go in, you can go home, you can stand outside and call the police, you can do whatever. You can't teleport to Vienna. And, that, and be right. because of that... You are limited in your possibilities. And so if we're looking at that limit of possibilities, I want to make sure that in that subset of things, 
you know, you have this idea of everlasting life in a soul. And, 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 and I, I, I get that. So what I'm, trying to okay. dis- what I'm trying to figure out is how you have determined that that is true, separate from the idea and, and, and why the idea that we just exist. Like, okay. is, well, is, well, is, it, is it because okay. it's scary? No. Okay, that's no, good. No, it's not that it's scary. So why? Okay, you, uh, why, why, why what? Why? Exactly. Sure, so why accept the idea uh, that... Sorry, I'm going back to a soul again. V, you want to hop in? Yeah, um, so I think what we're asking is, okay, so you're saying that you think that the... Uh, that we have souls and that they uh, are connected to the concept of life and that because we have souls, there is an afterlife where the souls continue to exist. Is that right? I More think that less? life is real. I think that life is real. Well, uh, so do I. The soul is... And, and, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so when you die, then what happens to, to life? See, because... You, you really die, die. The body doesn't cease to exist. The body doesn't cease to exist, though. No, it breaks down into a, its component parts you, okay. un, until the definition of it is no longer a body. Mm-hmm. It, so, it's not a body, but it, the, whatever the body is made of, it's still real. Yeah. Right. So what real okay. thing are you talking about that doesn't is unexplainable, unseeable, untestable, undoable, but definitely real? How? It's not physical. There's no way of knowing. Okay, There's wait. There's no way to, to, to test the, the, that's undetectable. Okay, hold on. Okay. So let's let's talk about the body like a machine, even though that has is problematic in some areas. Sure. Okay. So pretend that there is you do you have a car? Yeah. Okay. So you're driving your car, right? And then the car dies, right? The battery right. runs out, you're out of gas, no way to bring it back. That car is then scrapped for parts, right? Or condensed, uh-huh. crushed into a little cube or whatever they do. Right. Um, right. Is that still like your car is dead? You don't have that car anymore. You ex- you no. you had the car. You used the car. The car was working, and then it wasn't, and now it is scrap, scrap metal, right? Well, it doesn't look like a car. What uh, what the car is made out of, what what's there is real. It always is real. It's there. It's still there. You don't get rid of the atom. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could you could say that a car that, that a car is nothing more than a pile of atoms, just a grouping of atoms. Okay. Those don't. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. What's yeah. real is real. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I agree with you. It it has it's to just, have it it's it has some solidity, some substance. It's there's something there. Except for the thing that you're telling me exists. I'm not saying that there's that there's not something there. There's just no way to detect it. Okay. So I then can detect it, something that is undetectable. Well, the time to accept something is when you can, Steve. Why don't you why don't you pray to every god possible, everyone imaginable? How come you you, you know don't that's, wear that's different that's, ev- that's different. So that's, that's different. Well, that's I'll, different. I'll get you I'll get you to there why why I'm saying that. Because if we should be accepting things without evidence that points to it, then we're going to need to believe every single religion. All of them. Why not? We can't we can't we're not testing it but we're just taking it on face value and going okay, I'm going to believe it. You know what? Actually, uh, no, 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 no. If, I don't if, think so. If I told you I wanted to sell you some land in the desert, I, I mean, there has to be some part part of you that has some skepticism. Skepticism is an important thing. It's making sure that you don't get yeah. uh, completely pulled in and, and scammed and taken advantage of. And right now, I see what looks to me like a glaring place where someone can fit their way into that raw line of thinking and take advantage of you. That's why this is important to Ooh. me. I'm not trying to be an asshole. <laughs> I'm ta- that's why it's important. Uh, yeah, there, well, uh, no. Uh, so, so that... Good so, luck with that one. I mean, I, I mean... Well, uh, Steve, hold on a second. You are presenting that we should be accepting something that is unexplainable with zero qualities, with zero evidence and impossible to, I mean, 
can I sell you a soul? Does a soul have value? I'll sell you my soul. Uh, Does that work? Would you buy it? Would I buy it? No. Why not? Well, if it doesn't have value, is it like... I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to determine. You know, where, 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 like, you're giving something that does not exist value, and so I just asked you a version of that. Is it worth money? Yeah, well, and th and that, well, that's it? the question. Well, see now that then that really is the question. This is the if life isn't real. Hold on. Who in this who in this conversation thinks life isn't real? Well, your body is real, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if your life doesn't, does your life cease to exist? Yes. Is, yes. Where is the life? Then, then if, if life oh. is, is, death, is death, the separation, you see? Got it. If okay. life ceases to exist, then yes. it's not real. No. So I, now I get it. Thank you. You have described it in a way that I have caught on. Steve, you're viewing life as a thing. We view life as a Absolutely process. I am. Yeah. We view life Absolutely. as a process. So um, my, my brain state and all the, the, the chemicals and all the uh, electrons firing and all of that stuff, um, that, that is an integral part of who Eric Murphy is. Um, okay, so you, you, that, that's life to you then. You shut that off. The meat is there, but Eric is not because the state of being alive is the same as V's example of a car mm -hmm. running, Right. Uh, we're not talking about uh -huh. whether or not the car exists. We're telling you our bodies exist okay. and that we live in the world that exists, right? Those things are That's real. Right. Um, but when you're talking right. about living, it would be the same as driving. It would be that doing of the thing. The when, car is so working. Then life yeah. is, so, then, so then you're telling me that life is not real. I'm telling you that life is a concept. That describes functioning bodies, bodies that... Right have not ceased to function yet, and we call that life. In the same way that the number one is a concept, do you think that numbers are real? Uh, well, <laughs> they're not, re they don't, they, they're not made of anything. No, I mean, they, they're, they're con like you said, they're concepts. Sure. They, uh, we can use, we use them to, 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 to basically explain what's going on in front of us, I guess. Yes! Yes! You know? Okay, so let's clip that, and that's the answer. What is life? It is a concept that we're using to describe a process and that we can use to better describe this series of things, right? It is the process of having a form and existing in this way, that w w this is a living body, and in living, I am alive. When I stop living, I will no longer be alive. That doesn't mean that life has to be this... this I, the way you're saying real... It has this all or nothing quality, but you have to understand we live with abstract concepts because we're creatures that can think in abstract ways. Um, that doesn't mean anything that a, a value. It just means that this is how we understand it. So when you say, you know, well, if you don't live on forever, it's not real. Can you see why we're disconnecting? Well, the, the real is real is real to me. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, so you know, is, it, is the number one real. real? Got it. Okay. No. Then, then using your definition, I will agree. Life is not real. There you go. Okay. Cool. So then, what is what is the value of life then? Well, it's definitely not worth money. Apparently. <laughs> well, it's not worth money, but that doesn't. You know, money's not the only kind of value. We play, so, I mean, we, there's different kinds of value in okay. there. Okay. So so. <laughs> So, so you're moving from is to ought, and I, I get that. Um, why would you not? Sure. Um, so according to your definition, um, something has to be eternal to be real, and it has to be existent no, and not no, a concept. No, 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 no. Okay, help me. Uh, 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 it doesn't have to. What do you mean it doesn't have to be eternal? Well, well it, I mean, you can't. I mean, you know, you look at, you look at the... You know, uh, at, at the singularity there, you know, when, when we talk about the big one, what was there? It wasn't anything that exists now. So where are you drawing your line? I'm saying that what is real is real. It exists. So, Steve, 
I, the things that the things that are in the physical world that we live in is, is uh, there is it's constantly changing right it's 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 here today and it's gone tomorrow right so so to say that 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 something is is real is not to say that that a, a car is real not because it's a car but because of what it it has because it has some some kind of substance to it and there's something about it well, we as, as humans tend to label things based on the function they serve. Whether or not that's good or bad is irrelevant at this moment, but we tend we to do that. By, uh, the only uh, reason I, we call a car a car is because of what the car does. We're not describing inherent properties of the metal or the mechanics. Right. As long as it, as uh, long as it okay. does the thing we agree on, which is drive us places, it's a car. And once it stops doing that, it ceases to be a car. We, we can imagine a situation okay. where I say, hey, Steve, I invented something. I created it. Come take a look. It's a car. And you go, no, Eric, it's a toaster. Um, well, how did you determine that it's not a car? Because it toasts bread in that way. Right. Yeah. Right. That, that, it has to do with the way something looks. It's, 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 the, it's, it's not necessarily what it's made out of specifically. Like, uh, we, don't, we don't say that a car is a bunch of atoms. Right. Right. Even though that's what it is, I mean, you could boil everything. If it would did, we wouldn't be able to describe anything. If we if we did that, we'd just say, well, there's a bunch of atoms there, and there's a bunch of atoms there, and there's a bunch of atoms over there. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and the, the, we get nowhere that way. I agree, and I think we, the problem we is identify Steve, things by the way they look. Steve, mm -hmm. I think the problem here is the word real. Mm -hmm. Um, in the same way that you're saying, oh, that's a bunch of atoms. You're, we're really unable to have any deeper conversation. We're not able to describe things in a way that's useful if we just call things a bunch of atoms, right? We, we have specific right. words that we use to be able to convey concepts. Uh, when you're using the word real, it's, it's wiggly and it's fluffy and it's hard to pin down. And I, that's where I'm falling off the track each time. When you jump into it's not real... That's where I fall off. Mm -hmm. What about you, V? Yeah, I think that within this situation, we should define real first and what real is and what unreal is. And then maybe we can have a conversation within those boundaries. But real might well, then, mean something very okay. different to me than it does to Eric and you. Okay, well, okay. The, my, the way I understand, what I understand, when I say when I'm talking about something is, is real, I'm talking about something that has... Substance, something that that is has something about it, a, a solidity, a, a, a some some kind of substance to it. Our souls real. Our souls real. Yeah. I I believe they are. What is the I substance? I don't know to they it? are because there's nothing I can tell you about them other than. Okay, then, than, then then you've given me a useless concept. As soon as the idea of a soul has any kind of use or function whatsoever, we'll talk about it. But if there's nothing that you can give about it, it is pointless, useless. It, you might as well be creating, a, you know, some an invented. I, what's the point? If if something needs to have substance to be real, and yet souls are non-physical, then by your logic, souls can't be real, right? Let's repeat that one more time slower. Okay. So just going back to kind of some things you said earlier, you just gave the definition of real to mean something that has a substance of some kind. Right. Okay. And you also earlier said that souls are non-physical and have no detectable substance. Right. So does that mean that souls are not real because they don't have substance and you need substance to make something real? No, it doesn't doesn't mean that that they're not it, just because I can't detect something doesn't mean that it's not real. No, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have substance. It just simply means that I don't know. There's no way for me to describe anything about it. Yeah, and, and specifically. And, well, th there's a hole in that thinking that I can drive a Mack truck through. Um, the hole in that thinking is okay. So, can't detect it. Um, it doesn't have this substance that you're, pinge, you're, you're hinging reality on. Um, right. And yet, you are willing to accept something that does not fit that definition because you can't say it's not. Do you understand why I could drive a Mack truck through that? 
Well, I can understand that. Sure. Uh, Steve, yes, I have I $10 million dollars in my bank account. What you're saying. I just told you, does that make that true? Right? Okay. Just be, I mean, does that mean that it's true okay. until you prove me wrong? Uh, no. No, it, it just means that, that it means that I can't prove it. And, 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 Steve, do you know what cognitive dissonance is? Yeah, I've, I've heard the term. It's something that I have experienced a ton. Um, it's something that happens to a lot of us. And I think I'm looking at a live studio audience who is nodding, ahead, nodding along because most of us found our way out of religion and at some point had to come to face the fact that there were, we were holding two ideas in our head that could not both exist at the same time. Some of us believed that, uh, you know, okay, I've been convinced of the process of evolution and at the same time, God created all things in the way that they are. And when you hold on to them, it, it is uncomfortable and, 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 and rough. Exhausting. And I, I, I want to give you some affirmation that there's nothing wrong with this. Um, recognizing it and working through it is something that is valuable to us. Mm -hmm. Um, we encourage you okay. to chew on it. Okay, Take well, your time. Uh, all right. Well, I just, you know, it, it may, maybe it's because I can't, maybe uh, I see, because I, I see life and, and the soul as one. The same, they're, 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 you, you can, you can, enter, they're, is when you life talk real? about one, you're talking about the other. Okay, so then let's get rid of the idea of real and just talk about life or talk about, you know, get rid of life and talk about real. Right. right now, what those do is it just makes the water muddy. Um, but well, and and I mean, the, 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 okay, I understand. Okay, so yeah. so let's talk about life. You you see life as a process. Yeah. Okay, and, and I see life as as potential. What? What? Why? Because life is what gives us the, the ability, and life is, gives us the potential to do things. But I, so, yeah, I mean, so I'm, Steve, I'm sending, if, if neither one of us were alive, if one of us wasn't alive, we wouldn't be talking to each other. So, but we have okay. the potential to talk to each other because we're alive. You're talking to an amateur craftsman. Um, I have gotten into and love metalworking. And when I see a piece of steel, I mean, mm -hmm tool grade, high carbon steel, something that I can melt down and yeah. make into, you know, if you wanted to make a knife and it would be sharp and hold that edge. Oh my gosh. If you wanted to, you know, and I see that and I see potential there. Does that mean that that metal is alive or that no. a wood carver would no, see no, no, a piece no, no, of wood no. is alive or a, no, no, no. Okay. No, no, not unless, not unless that metal can make itself. You did, see, life, life, did you life make yourself positive life? Uh, it, and, and you're adding more on to oh, no. life now. You're, 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 you're now giving it more definitions. So now it's something that has substance and creates itself. No, it doesn't create it. When you, it creates itself, okay? Well, no, it, I'm, I'm uh, using your definition. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. Okay. Well, it has, to, it has to be, life, life is constructive. Life is life, life is a positive. It, it adds to. It's constructive. You see, I mean that that's the way I see it. I don't. If you if, you know what I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 the, at the moment of my conception, if life had failed, I wouldn't be here. There would be no first cell. And I you see. No, I don't. Because you're now giving an explanation to something that absolutely has no cause for explanation or any explanatory value. You just gave a, here, here, here's what it is. What the fuck are you talking about? I care about you, Steve, as a person, but what the fuck does that mean? Without life, there would be no cells. When mommies and daddies love each other very much, right? We know, that we, we know the birds and the bees talk. That's where cells come from. Yeah. Where is this, this, this intangible quality? It's, it's maddening. You're, 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 you're wiggling all around it and the only place that we have that really sits there in our experience is cognitive dissonance that's where we can relate you want to wiggle out hold yourself to a higher standard you deserve it <laughs> okay all right thank you for calling in steve uh, uh -huh. <laughs> take care 
I was not <sighs> going to get drawn into the life begins at conception nope. thing. Nope. I was going to leave that where it was. So, so people in yep. the live chat were talking about nihilism. And I'm absolutely, you know, down with absurdism and, 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 and this positive nihilist approach that, yeah, okay, um, I don't think that there's some grand scheme of which I'm a part and that I've been created to play this pivotal role. Does that mean that my life isn't worth living? Well, maybe not to you, but it is to me. Mm-hmm. I give it value. I can go to the grocery store and say, you know what? Um, I'm going to die and be forgotten someday. I think I'm going to go for the low-calorie English muffins. Um, and it's something that is, is, is interesting, but it's the value that we give it. Mm-hmm. And what I've heard from so many people is this idea that, well, unless it has this outside value given to it, it is not a value. Well, why is that the case? Or if, if, it's, if it's not eternal, it doesn't have value. Right. That's exactly the opposite. Like, opposite of everything we use to function. The only reason money is worth anything is because there's a limited supply of it. And, and uh, even then, you're talking about an abstract concept. Right, exactly. Um, so it, it just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't fit. Um, but I mean, I could have talked on that call all day and just like yeah, followed I, it in circles. Well, I, I totally talked over you. I'm sorry. I'm going to give you more chance on the next call. That is okay. Um, this, wow. Yeah, no. Um, if there's anything to take from it that's positive, you are the value giver. When it comes to those things in your life that you take care of, uh, the people that you love, and the the things that you do, I come in here every day because I see value in this. That's enough. That is real. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. Oh my goodness. Some interesting ones. I love it. Tawana in Florida. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Hi. What would you like to talk Hi. about? Is, is Matt there? Because I can't see you. I can only hear. I know some people can watch this. Sure. I don't know if, I'm, if he's there. Hi. Is Matt there? You're talking. Hi. You've called in to Talk Heathen. Talk Heathen okay. is the younger sister show of the atheist experience. I am oh, okay. Eric Murphy. Okay. Uh, and this is okay. Vila Bianca. Hello. And um, okay. we are like that show, but we're a little more patient. Okay. We take a little bit more time. Sometimes. Matt's been getting more. Matt's been getting more patient and, and, and all of that. And so now he's, he's, he's causing me to step up my game in that area. So it's, 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 it's a constant thing, but we love each other. Um, what did you want to talk about? I wanted to talk about what, because he always asks the question of why do you believe in God? Or if mm-hmm. you don't, what, what is the reason? I only have one reason that keeps me holding on to God's hand. Mm-hmm. It's this one thing that I probably, if it wasn't for that, I probably would have been an atheist. But it's that one gnawing thing that happened. When I was, you know, I grew up in a very, um, you know, Southern Baptist, like everybody else. And then when I was 12, my mother moved to New Thought. I don't know if you're ever familiar with that type of uh, Christianity. It's scientific based. Unity, science, the mind. They believe that you are God. God is in you. There's no higher God. There's no God up in the sky. It's more of you. And they only use the Bible to, like, use it as a parable, not as, like, this is real. They know it's not real. Honestly, I... And that's the way... I I personally see that as changing definitions so that you can hold on to your Christianity. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's that's kind of what we moved into. And what happened is when I was 12, that was the first experience, we had a friend... And she was diagnosed with um, a very severe cancer. They said she wasn't going to live. She only had so many days, blah, blah, blah. And she, she's still here. And I said, well, healings. I saw a lot of healings there. And that's what helped. That's the only thing that I still have that I see that I said, well, maybe could be because of the healings. Because I know I, I don't feel like I can heal myself. So well, you, you and the doctors, your, your body heals yourself all the time. You go to doctors because they, they aid in that healing process. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you definitely, if you've ever been to the hospital, probably uh, believe that I as well. Go, I don't go to, I don't fool, I don't fool with doctors. I don't know. I just have Wait, what? <laughs> I don't fool with doctors. Why not? Because if they tell me some shit and I don't believe they can help me, then what's the point? Um, expertise and knowledge, right? So if I, I have an infection, <laughs> if I have an infection, 
I'm going to go to that doctor to investigate because if I go and try and get myself antibiotics, I might have something lodged in me, right, that is causing that infection. I want mm-hmm. to know I don't have a degree that and, and the experience necessary to investigate what's going on with my body. I'm going to go to a professional. That's a doctor. Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, I, 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 well, I've been to a doctor, of course, but no, I'm not a, like a doctor thumper because I see doctors doctor putting people thumper. on roller coasters. Yeah, like the Bible thumpers, they, people that just steady go in and out of the doctor and they don't get any better. He's steady going, steady going, run up their tab, but they don't get any better. Nothing is happening for them. They're still the same sick, poor sap that they were when they went the first day. And I know my dad went every year and he still died. It wasn't like they they, Wait, they were do, able to help him. <laughs> do, do, do doctors promise that they'll... So here's here's the no. thing. I'm, I'm pushing back because um, mm-hmm. what a horribly dangerous thing to say, right? Yeah, I just never I, did trust them. I mean, could you doctors, imagine you somebody know? listening to you saying this and going, you know what? I'm not going to go get that cancer screening. <laughs> would you... Would you Their choice. Yeah, that's a horrendous choice. That I, yeah, <laughs> right? That's well, a, yeah. And if you think that that's a horrendous choice for someone else, then why are your standards lower for yourself? Mm. That, that's, that's what I could always believe in healing. So I you never, believe in healing. Ever, that's probably have you ever why. Seen, have you ever seen a limb regrown? N- no, I haven't seen it. Okay, what about... Never um, heard of it. You've never heard of somebody growing back a leg? No. Oh. But I've heard of people that have had cancer, who have had bad, and they've been they did oh. not have it anymore. But you I've don't. Heard of that. I've seen that. <laughs> You've seen that, but you're not a doctor, and you won't go to doctors. Right. Right. Do you understand how that is wholly ridiculous? <laughs> yeah. Well, I you I saw it, and I thought it was because of again God, not because of a, a doctor. That's why. Hold on, I get it. That's mm-hmm. you said cancer. You are not a doctor. Mm-hmm. I'm right. assuming that's a doctor's diagnosis. Right. It was a the doctor's cancer diagnosis. went away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you are assuming that not a doctor, like spontaneous right. remission happens. It, 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 okay. I'm, what? Well, she stopped <laughs> going to treatment. She stopped going to treatment. The person I'm speaking of, he but, told her nothing they can do for her. But she got and treatment she first before she, she stopped going? Um, she said she got it long time ago. He said, I can't help you anymore. He even told her, he said, you should just go pray because there's nothing more I can do as a doctor for you. I wow, what a holy fucked up thing what for a, a doctor to what say. A, yeah. That's, yes. So, yes. So, so, and she's still living to this day. And she's 60 years old. Okay. They did this when she was 23. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Um, do you believe in the concept of the Christian God? Do I believe what? The, do, do you believe in the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac? I uh, used the to, one but who when I realized inspired that Moses he to, didn't. Oh, no, not no more. Uh, not, not no more. I don't believe in that anymore because of, I believe that if a person doesn't teach you, teach you well, treat you well, they can't treat you, teach you well. And I believe that the slave masters is the ones who inspired that God to my people and they didn't treat us well. So why would they give me a Bible that was correct or good to help me when they were making me a slave? So I can't under that notion, believe in that God. Can somebody clip God that? that, would do that. <laughs> Can somebody clip that? I've had plenty of people mm-hmm. call and, and not be able to understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I can't believe that someone so, would treat me bad and then teach me something so good. So mm-hmm. absolutely. That God is uh, fucked up as do, far as I'm concerned. Uh, do you believe <laughs> Do you believe in gods at all or any kind of deity, or do you just believe that we can heal ourselves? I'm a, wi- I'm a witch, and I believe in African spirituality, so I, I practice hoodoo, voodoo, and things of that nature. Okay. Do you believe that that's real? Mm-hmm. Yes, because I've seen things Let's happen, t- and I, can we test I do it? work for people. Yeah, I do work for people, so that's all I can tell cool. you. Cool. Can, can we test it? <laughs> yeah. Put a curse on me right now. I'm giving but you permission in front of thousands curse. of people. Yeah, but I don't do curses like that. I use things to do stuff to people. I don't just say it out of my mouth. I'm not that type. I do things. I use things. I use. Okay. I make mojo bags and dolls and stuff like that. I don't just say it. So it would take me a minute to make a curse for you. I'll wait. No, you go. I mean, a minute. Like I have to go get the supplies and all that stuff because I do work for people. I do real work for people. Cool. And what so I here, mean by so that is the they deal. pay me to help them. Yeah. In um, situations. Yeah, I will transfer you money. And mm-hmm. save a line for you on the atheist experience, which, which is in three hours, right? Okay. And 
I would absolutely. How much are we talking? 20 bucks? No. Uh-uh. Work costs more than that. You're talking about something that. I'm giving you the you chance to, to live would, on air you. prove you. your faith. <laughs> and I'm, I'm offering just, to give you money, which I think is pretty nice. I'll reimburse you for the, the regents spell cost. For you or something, something, something nice, like do a love spell for you or help you with a money issue or something like that. I don't. Well, no, I want my teeth to fall out of my head on air. <laughs> oh, no. You know, I'm not going to be like that. Why Everything not? Work like that. I want you to show me that this is real and you're just hiding in these things that, that are unprovable. Kill me right now. Yeah. Well, how I know it's real is because when I have problems, I use formulas for myself and it works for me. And I have clients that have reported that they have um, improved in their life or whatever the situation they've come to me for. So, you know, I work with, I, know it's real. I work with people who mm-hmm. life mission is to hurt, mm-hmm. is to absolutely ruin that. And I'll tell you why. Because mm-hmm. we have people in our lives who were taken advantage of by people who do what you're saying you're doing. And I'm not oh, saying no, that I, you I take know. advantage of people. I have had, I, listen, I, when I started out, I had people that took advantage of me. That's uh-huh. why I said, you know what? I better learn to do it my damn self so right. that I can do it the right way. <laughs> cool. What, what tangible evidence? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm giving you uh, ideas here. You know, make something. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to. I'm not I, I want trying my to hair to fall out. I want my skin to turn green. It. Well, why not? Yeah, no, if, I'm not if, if you're to, living your life yeah. by this, how come you're not trying to prove yeah. it? I'm not sure because I have clients that. that oh, are so you get money, yeah. and that's why you <laughs> do it. Client. Yeah, I do it for. I do it. It's a work. It yeah. is a work. It is a job. It's a dishonest job. It's something job. I love. It, I love. No, not if it works. It's not. All okay, they care if about it works, then show me. You'll get a whole lot more clients. Yeah. Well, you set it up. We talk, and I'll set it up with you, and I'll do a, I'll do a spell. As you call it, so we call it work. And my thing, but, well, okay. when I do Wiccan part, it's called spell. That's but fine. When you do voodoo and hoodoo, they say work. Cool. They say work. I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking yeah. to you about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. You get my number and call me. And no, I'll no, you're talking up. to me right now. I want my teeth to fall yeah. out of my head in three hours. It doesn't work like that. What? It's a formula. Okay. It's a what? science. It doesn't work like that. Okay. What can you And do? anybody that tells you that they can do some work in three hours, they're a fucking liar. It takes sometimes three months for people to see shit happen. Two months. It doesn't okay. work like that. That's bullshit. Okay. They're bullshitting you. That's not so, real work. Perfect. Mm-hmm. It's, it's October 13th, 2019. <laughs> I'm going to set a calendar reminder for myself. And in January, I want to hear from you. Will that okay. be enough time? I will give you time yeah, but on I my make show. Your teeth. Can we pick something else? Not your teeth. Come yes. on, really. Yes. My hair is my something defining easier. feature. No, because here's the thing, um. Tana. If that is true, I don't deserve to be here. I want to learn what is true about the world. And if what I'm saying okay. is, is, then I should be talking about what you're doing. If that is true, if that is an actual thing, I want to know. I want it to be proven. Mm-hmm. I want to be wrong. Yeah. Because if you can't yeah, prove that, then then... What we're doing is we're just learning more about the world. And everything that I've learned about what you do is not actually a thing. There's I don't a, want you to prove I me can, wrong. I can, land, I can line you up with a whole bunch of witches that will tell you you are def, they, they definitely do true shit. They will be insulted that you even think that they can't do true cool. shit. Cool. Then, oh, yeah. then I'm calling That's you out it. on air in front of your friends. <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is. I'll talk to you in January. Sound good? In January. Sounds good. All right. Okay. And make it tangible. I want my hair to fall out or my teeth to fall out. My my name's Eric Murphy. I'll pop you back on hold and uh, we can get that with the call screener. Eric Murphy. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. Yeah. The reason that a lot of witches like to push things out three or four months and then also make them intangible things like money or love is because you have a higher chance of finding something that confirms that the spell is working Mm -hmm. in three months. Or it's, um, well, you know, here's here's the excuse, here's the excuse, here's the excuse. Right. Um, you know, it, it's the same thing that people do with intercessory prayer is, well, I prayed to get healed from this cancer, mm-hmm. uh, but it didn't work. Well, you didn't pray the right way. You weren't praying hard enough. You weren't the right kind of Christian. Or Every they excuse. completely turn the, the definition like, oh, I, I realized I didn't want that anymore. And that was the magic of the, of the yeah. prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which is, in, which is absolutely ridiculous. Tawana, I'm going to hold you accountable. Call back in. 
Because if you make it happen, I will say live on air that you were right. But if you don't, I will say live on air that you were wrong. All right. Uh, what do you want to do next? Um, let's see. I feel like Jan has been waiting for a while. Okay. Jan in West Virginia. You're talking to Eric and V. How are you doing? I am good, Eric and V, although my brain is tired. I, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been laughing so hard. It's, it's, it's so nice. It's, it's, oh, my goodness. It, it is unbelievable. I, I don't. What? I, we live in this world with other people, and we need to understand that other people believe some shit, and that is some shit. <laughs> but what did you one want? Of my, one, one of my first reactions to what she was saying, if you are from the South, you already know this, what I'm thinking. Bless her heart. <gasps> yeah. Oh, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh-huh. That's the southern woman's all purpose. Yeah. Huh. Uh, all right. What did you want to talk you about? Bless her heart. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Ooh, that's, that stings. Okay. <laughs> I can feel that. What, what, what did you want to talk about? At the basis of every religious idea in every religion that I've ever read about, studied about, except possibly for some rainforest dweller animist religions, Mm -hmm. is the concept that you are just not worthy. You are no good. You are a sinner from birth. You are a piece of trash. Yep. And they call it submit. Mm Mm-hmm. Submit, give in. You must get down on your knees and pray. If you're a Muslim, you are not only worthy, you got to work your way into even being worthy. Mm-hmm. You got to five times a day, down on your knees, down on your face before whatever. Right. All fall short before the glory of God. Well, but that concept is totally un American. <laughs> you just. That was. That was Didn't that was we hard fight to hear. a war not to submit? Well, you know, honestly, though, that it it doesn't. While I understand the outrage, it doesn't follow. I mean, what? Do you, how so? I I was taught to be in the world, not of the world. I was taught that I am in this country. I am in the United States. I am a citizen of God, and that where I go, I need to be spreading Christianity, but not be influenced by the outside forces of the world, including that government, including those values. I stood up to a science teacher and said in ninth grade, when he tried to teach us about evolution, this is one of the cringy moments. I close my eyes and I, I, I cringe when I, before I go to sleep. I said, I don't believe in evolution. I believe in God. <laughs> um, you're encouraged to strike out against education. Um, those, those are not mutually exclusive concepts. You can live in the world uh, as, as, as an American and, and pick and choose kind of the pieces you want to take. They're, they're not, they don't cancel each other out, unfortunately. But the religion still, what you were believing, what you were taught to believe, you were taught you were supposed to submit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Follow the rules. Do what we tell you. No, do what God, God tells you. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's God's will. You must submit yourself to God's will. Yeah. Yep. That the concept of submitting yourself to someone else's will without you having any say ever. Right. That's not democratic. Who cares? That's autocrat. That's theocratic. Yeah, but but who cares? And it makes. No, it, it, I'm it, just saying. Yeah, it, no, it, it makes you angry and it's, it's a upset. Stupid concept. Sure. I guess is the point. It's I, a really stupid concept. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that you're that you when you were born, you are suddenly not good. Yeah, well, that's because you were born flawed. You were born a sinner, according to that that view. Yes, it's what, because that you can't be. You cannot be born unless somebody has an orgasm, at least at the time of St. Augustine. So yeah, that's, yeah. that made you bad. <laughs> um, yes. But, but I, 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 guess, I guess what I want to do is I want to make you um, more efficient, a, a better communicator 
Um, if you were to all talk right. to a Christian and say that that argument, all they're going to go is, "Oh, well, they're just mad at God." <laughs> you're not. You're not going to get anywhere. While I understand it, and I understand the outrage and the upset about it, because yeah, that is pretty fucked up. Um, don't use that as an argument with a Christian. It's not going to. It's not going to win. It's not going to help. It, okay, because because well, there's not logic in it. It's yeah. it's just outrage. You know. We can uh, we can have this catharsis together and and, and <laughs> a good way to maybe bring it up with a um, with a Christian would be why why do we value democracy so much why is it better than a, a autocracy or a theocracy and then have them commit to saying that this is a better way to live because it imbues people with dignity and uh, accountability and all of these things and then ask why then. Do you not carry that over into your religious life? That might be an interesting. But an argument yes, from very hypocrisy. Good metaphor. And oh. and religion, of course, is the you know queen of the hypocr hypocrisy languages. Well, but you can be a hypocrite and still correct. Mm -hmm. So yes, e even and then, you you can be a hypocrite and be an atheist. Oh, yeah, I've met Hypocrisy plenty. Hypocrisy is not limited to Christianity or no. of the other religions, although they're really good at it. But it's not something that we should hinge our our beliefs or understanding of the world on because uh, someone can be an asshole and still exist, you know. So. <laughs> oh, well, you I, I have, got proved. Yeah, well, you, you, I, ooh. I need to shut up about. We know right that, now. right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a dish, and that's going to be real bad. <laughs> uh, Jen, it's nice. Well, to talk. you know, when it's group evidence, you know, and it's recorded for posterity, it's really hard to say it didn't happen. Um, it depends on the claim. We're throwing a couple things out that I think would be really slippery. Um, we definitely want to hold ourselves to that higher standard, and. Uh, I get it, but I'll tell you in my own life, even when I'm talking amongst friends, that kind of thing irks me, and I call them out, and they roll their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Jan, <laughs> thank you for calling in. That was very, very sweet. Really interesting today, you guys. I'm, I'm enjoying right? it. Well, let's dive well, well, we're going to dive into the next one. Um, thank you. Thanks for calling, Jan. Have fun. <laughs> we'll do. That was like a breath of fresh air. That was funny. Oh, there are sane people in the world. This well, I, I, I just don't want to perpetuate the, the stereotype of the angry atheist. Right. Um, and while I understand we're laughing and we're having a good time, I do want to make sure that we are portraying that the rest of us, you know, the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we see hypocrisy and all of that, and, and we're upset about it. Um, but that's not a reason to write us off. We actually, we have good reasons. Right. And we're happy to talk about it. And also for all new angry atheists out there, anger is also an okay emotion as long as it's inspiring positive action and you're not using it as the basis of your arguments. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Catharsis is wonderful. Yeah. Um, injuring somebody is not. Uh, let's go to Fox in Massachusetts. Fox, you're talking to Eric and V. Yeah, How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Um, I want to just say right off the bat, I love you guys. Uh, I love what you do. I love everything that you guys do. You guys are the are a positive beacon in a dark, dark world. Uh, I so, love you too. Thank thanks you. For doing what you do. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm here to set some stuff straight about nihilism. <laughs> <laughs> Please, because um, my God, you missed the missed the mark, dude. Oh my God, correct the target me. was the opposite direction. Cool, correct me. Uh, well, it. you you got you got the you got the basic idea of it correctly, but you got the 1901 version of it, which is basically the uh, simple um, rejection of social um, social, religious and moral constructs. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a simple nihilist. I am a cosmic nihilist. Okay. There's many different kinds. There's existential nihilism, cosmic nihilism. Um, before I go any further in this, I do just want to say about the Wiccan caller. Uh, mm -hmm. My partner is Wiccan, and Wiccans don't do spells, bro. Dude, um, where do you and, begin? I, I mean, honestly, at that point, it's it's story time. And, like, I, 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 I was called out in the comments last week because somebody uh, had had flown by and I didn't, like, 
call them to the floor on a thing, but it was in between oh, no, a thousand other things. It was just like... <laughs> I tell I tell my partner, and I feel bad for saying this, I'm like, the difference between you and me is we're both walking around a dark black room that's a circle and has no corners, and we're looking for a cat that isn't there. The difference between you and me is that you found it. Okay. And basically, why well, I, I I had to jump ship on religion completely when I like, when I discovered, and I want every theist to hear this. Jesus's name could not have possibly been Jesus. He would have spoken Hebrew or Aramaic. Both languages neither consist ha, have the J sound in it. Well, it's, his name would have been Yeshua Ibn Yosef, yeah, or Yoshua, Joshua, something like that. It would, but it like it, 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 I'm, I had to just throw the the baby out with the bathwater at that point. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, you, uh, the, Apollonius of Macedonia, Vishnu, Krishna, and it's the story of the star baby. It's the zodiac calendar, and it's been done since paganism, and that's why Christianity pat, piggyback on it. Anywho, but about, back to nihilism. But um, we meet people cosmic where nihilism at. simply says that the that the universe does not give a shit about you, me, or anybody at all. It does yeah. not care. It is not anything. I'm on board with you that so far. That does not mean that because it, because I do believe in the complete rejection of religious, social, and moral constructs. And I think people get a little scared when they hear the moral constructs because too many of you have seen the big Lebowski. Yeah. Now, now, nihilism does not mean that because you think everything is meaningless, that intrinsically that means that it has no value or that it has no consequence. I did not say it that. It simply means that on the... On, I know you did not. I'm not saying you did. Okay. I'm just... I'm, I'm saying that right now. Okay. The, um, the, the, uh, the idea is that everything, even that of which is intangible to us, can be explained with math and science. It's just maybe math and science that we don't understand yet. Sure. Uh, and the idea that everything is meaningless... Uh, I started with nihilism because I have uh, I, I do believe in Everett's theory of quantum mechanics, which is um, the quantum theory that states that a, a particle can exist in two places at once. Um, therefore, our atoms could technically exist in infinite amounts of universes. No. Uh, so <laughs> I believe that things are meaningless because the decision that you've made somewhere in another universe, you already made the opposite decision. That doesn't mean that it's not important. It means that you have to prescribe the importance to it. So it's up to you. Universe isn't going to give you any meaning because there isn't anything there. I've I, died four times, and I've got to tell you, there ain't nothing waiting. Fox? So, Fox. Yes, sir. The back half of that, I am on board. The front half of that, I am not on board. <laughs> and since you're citing that as your oh, I reason... Never, I would never try to get you on board on that. Well, I would never try to get anybody to be a nihilist ever. It's, no, it's, no, it's a, no. Your understanding of, of quantum mechanics and, and the way that universes... I'm no. I think the nihilism part we're on board. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but your reasoning for being a nihilist it wor worries me. Well, the multiverse theory. Yeah. Well, I, like I, I don't. Uh, I would never say yes. Go ahead and believe in the multiverse theory because let's face it, it's a bit science fictiony. But well, it, it's, it's one it's, thing. It's that not I just do that it's that a bit science fictiony. It's um, that you, you, when when you're discussing. Um, quantum states, and you're you're talking about you know these things at this very 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 small level. Um, yes, yeah, almost a level that almost doesn't exist. Like if things that but, happen so quickly and so minutely but, that they're barely there. But Fox, yes, sir. Sorry, <laughs> no, that, that's okay. That's okay. There's a fallacy you're falling into here. Um, okay, I need to hear this because I need to be corrected. I do absolutely. Um, the fallacy of division, right? Division mm -hmm. and and um, composition, I believe. Right, so so the parts of, the parts of it are all all share the same uh, characteristics of the whole. If I took a wheel off of a car, I'm not holding a car, right? If I yeah, took the absolutely. steering wheel out, I don't have a small car. It, it it's it, th yeah. those are each the component pieces. It could be such that while we so you're saying so like since the atoms that exist in us, that does not mean that we ourselves are also part of these uh, particles that exist in multiple places. Exactly. At once. All right, that's plausible, but I don't know if it's provable. I don't know if, well, actually, the thing is, is it could be such that that is not, um, it's not possible, right? Um, 
Yeah. But the, the time to accept it is when there's evidence for it. I would say the null Absolutely. position is not to take mm -hmm. that stance, not not to okay. not to necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. reject it, but just don't take it. Right, right, right. Okay. 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 Uh, let me let me get back to my track out here. Yeah. Um, the um, like the thing with um with with that uh, is that I believe that the value that we give to things it involves zooming in, like, but trying to put meanings onto things, you're inherently just, you're, you're wasting time. Like things have meaning because you give it there. It's not because it had a meeting before you got there. Mm -hmm. And it's not because it was giving a meeting because you're there. Like it's, um, it's simply a thing that like the universe is chaotic. It's a chaotic beast. And like, I love what Matt Dillahunty said. He quoted Stephen Hawking when he said, if the universe was made for anything, it was to create black holes. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the basic thing is that like your universe, it's going, it, it, you need to take your universe for a ride because it's going to try to buck you and it will buck you. So when it does, why not say you took it for everything it was worth? I agree. Where are you correcting me? I'm not correcting you anywhere. I was just making, finishing my track. Damn it. <laughs> I, I thought you were calling to say, no, Eric, you were wrong about this. I need to teach you some philosophy. And I'm like, I am ready Fox. Nope, you just have the older version. I'm going to just like, kind of like on a footnote, I guess. All right, <laughs> fine. Um, take care. Next time, call in with, with, with more we can chew on uh, because I, well, um, I want to engage. Why, why is the multiverse theory so uh, ridiculous? So um, whether or not something gets ridiculed definitely doesn't impact whether or not it's true. So I definitely don't want to fall into that habit. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason why I uh, wasn't. I'm sorry. That made it seem like that made it seem like I said that you were calling it that. That's not what I meant at all. Oh, no, 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 no. But it, but it's a good point to bring up because yeah. there are people in the live chat that were like, "Holy moly, you can lay this guy out as an absolute tool." The very first caller, and ridiculing that person does not make them wrong. It just makes me an asshole. Yeah, but right. Who cares? I do. I give that that value statement, and so me too. I, I'd rather not be an asshole, but every once in a while, people need the blunt force truth. I agree. I'm not saying that the multiverse theory is I'm all, just all, all approaches. A, a basic statement. Yeah, it takes it takes all types. I'm going to be more of an asshole later this evening when I uh, <laughs> host on the atheist experience. Um, that's well, assholes, no assholes, and I love you. <laughs> I love you too, man. Take care, brother. <laughs> Take care, guys. I again love what you do. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. I thought I was learning, going to learn a, a thing. I think the uh, updated version was the quantum physics bit. Yeah. That's what it seemed like. I mean, and, and it's funny, I, I got into an argument with a Christian and an atheist about that. Mm -hmm. And both of them jumped into multiverse. Yep. And um, I, I, I said, you're, you're, while I understand this is where you're at, my knowledge level may be too low. You know, what I understand about this may, too, may be too low and I need to learn more possible does not mean probable. Right. And I can imagine it does not mean possible. And so just because you can imagine turning levers on a universe and creating different types of gravity and uh, different, you know, laws and states of a universe, right? Mm -hmm. That's great mental masturbation. Right. But that doesn't mean that that is possible or that there exists universes where you can turn the lever on it. Looking at you, Anselm. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that was good. Yeah, um, and so I, I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, I explore it, and I definitely want to see evidence. Um, but until such time that that happens, I'm not going to automatically grant that something is possible. It right. could be that it's not. In the same the, way, oh, go ahead. The only the only way that I see the multiverse theory as useful, and I'm not using theory in the scientific sense, um, is when you are talking to somebody who is like, no, this is the only way things could possibly be. Like caller number two. Yeah. This is the only way. It's like, okay, well, let's brainstorm other possibilities and then use that as a way to deconstruct the idea that there's only one possibility. But Absolutely. apart from that, I feel like it doesn't lend too much to the conversation. Yeah, no. I, the, the, the places where I see the it could only, it may be that that is just the only way mm -hmm. is like when we, when we talk about things like um, using the physical world to uh, prove the physical world. You know, yeah. using logic to prove logic. Well, that is circular. Okay, so how do you get to logic? How do you how do you test and, and, and show logic without using logic to do that? Right. Um, it may be that that is just the case. That is just a function of the universe. In the same way that I talk about jumping off of my balcony, um, 
I really got to stop that. People are going to get concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I can do it 10,000 times and that does not necessarily mean that there is a chance that I will fly like Superman. It may just be the case that I live in a universe where gravity exists all of the time. And to date, that has been the case. Someone start a website and count how many times Eric has jumped off his balcony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, it, you know what? I, I think it could go right up there with the count of... Um, so what I am saying is... <laughs> uh, <laughs> But um, let's dive in. Actually, you know what? Let's thank those patrons uh, because it's a little past that time, and I know our producer is going to get mad at me for staying on too long. Um, <laughs> let's thank our top five patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, if you like what we're doing, if you want to support it, you can go to patreon.com slash talkheathen to me. That's patreon.com slash talkheathen to me. The ACA, the Atheist Community of Austin, is where we're at. This is a 501c3 nonprofit. What we do is put on these shows because we do find value in it. And if you do too, and you're able to support it, do, because we're using this platform to get as much out as we can. We're starting other shows, we're practicing, we're getting people out here, we're giving a platform to people who need it, and we're trying to use that to get the word out if you want to support that. Definitely consider supporting the, the ACA, and definitely do that for Talk Heathen, because Talk Heathen is awesome. Patreon.com slash talk heathen to me. Our top five patrons are Charlotte Crumb, Desert Heathen, Bethany P, Dr. Funkenstein, and Ribau? 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 Ribau. <laughs> Thank you so much for being our top patrons. We would not be able to do this without you. I understand this absolutely whoring out, but you know what? <laughs> I, we're not getting paid for this. No, this, this is... Our free, our free Sunday. This is how we spend our free time. Yeah, this, this is volunteer work. Um, we obviously support it, and we hope you do too. Uh, let's move on to the next caller, though. Who do you want to take? Uh, let's take Charlie. All right. Charlie in Illinois. You're talking to Eric and V. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm glad to be on here. Nice to talk to Eric and V. Uh, v, how are you liking the show so far? I um, see that you've only been here for a few weeks. Oh, I'm loving it. It's been a couple months, and I am still still get the butterflies every time. So <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time calling in, so I got them myself. Talking to uh, Eric over there and you as well. I got gotcha. you. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so today I was calling... To start off with, uh, do either of you believe that the that the universe ha like the what's going to happen has already been predetermined technic by like the laws of the universe starting at the Big Bang? Oh, you go first, because yeah. I know you're gonna you're gonna take this and run with it. Um, I don't know, but I would say my best understanding is that there was no predetermining force, but rather the inevitable uh, cause and effect situation that is our, our narrow state, our, our brain waves, our atoms, everything, our environmental factors, all of that does throw the idea of at least libertarian free will under the bus. Um, I can't speak more to it than that, I don't think. So let's go with, I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Uh, I don't think there was any force behind it uh, as well. I think it was just cause and effect. This thing caused this thing, which caused other things, which eventually right. led to people. And those previous things led to people making decisions and it'll lead to things happening in the future. Uh, so um, the only thing that I want to add in as a caveat is um, I'm sure people are going to be jumping in. Determinism. It's determinism. <laughs> no. <laughs> I disagree. Fight me. <laughs> um, so do I think that we live in a physical universe that has uh, characteristics that are, you know, everything is acting on each other and, and, and what we have is, is, 
what appears to be a reaction, right? I've talked to people who think that we are here as an inevitability, that at the instantiation of the universe, however that happened, it set off a chain of dominoes that could not have been any other way because of the interactions of things. That is just the way it works. Another, another version of throwing out free will. Mm -hmm. I disagree. Yeah. I don't think we have free will. No, fuck that. But I do think that there is randomness. That if there's a 50% chance, I know that uh, w there have been studies, you know, oh, well, a, per a person's choosing, they think they have a 50% chance. No, their brain's picking a thing, and they're going to pick that thing every time, not 50% of the time. But if we live in an uncaring universe, right, if we live in a universe where there is actual randomness, then I would think that it is not an inevitability. Um, mm -hmm. So no to free will and no to hard determinism. Okay. Um Thanks for most of your answers, um, because this is leading into, like, the main point of why I called is, I, I first I gotta say, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm gonna make you believe uh, what I'm about to say next, that's not really the point of me calling, just wanted to bring it, like, that's talk okay. to you guys about it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna um, respond with, if you don't that, think it's gonna convince us, why does it convince you? Exactly. Um, so, since the furthest back that I can remember that this happening uh, is about the sixth or seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have dreams mm -hmm. that are very short, like five, ten seconds. Uh, the only thing connecting these dreams together is at when, when the dream is about to end, I will say or think something similar to I had a dream that this happened. That's where all the dreams end. The reason why I bring this up is because all of these dreams have been little short snippets of my future um, where they've been like, you're in a classroom and you and the rest of the class or me and the rest of the class, uh, are watching a movie that I've never seen before. And then another one where I'm in a different classroom with people I've never met before starting a new school year. And other things like that. So, And all of those dreams I have experienced, uh, as far as I can tell, they were close to like... 100% accurate as I could get, probably, so, like, Charlie? 95 or so. Charlie? Um, yes? Yeah. Um, so there are a couple very, very human things that we do that I think much easier, explain that much, much easier. Um, mm -hmm. So let's start with counting the hits and ignoring the misses. That's the first th place I'm going to explore. Have you ever had a dream that yeah. did not come true? No. Every dream you have comes true. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me uh, say that. Only the dreams where I've said or thought the phrase similar to, I had a dream that this happened. Okay. Only those ones. So what I would like you to do is keep a dream journal. Um, yes. Uh, on that, I have talked to the blog on that. I do apologize. I've been meaning to start one, uh, but I just haven't yet. Get, get a good uh, year or two under your belt. And do not erase or line out things that don't come true. Exactly. Um, big thing uh, for that, though, is generally I only have like one or two a year. So I'll probably wait a few more than just one year because just two things probably won't be convincing to anyone. Then it shouldn't be convincing to you. Well, that's why it's been happening one day two times a year since about sixth, seventh grade. So you do know how memory works too, correct? Yes, that it's flexible and every time that you remember something, it changes. And um, I'm going with one or two times a year because that is like what I, rem what I remember happening of the minimum of once a year. Right. A memory uh, of a dream. Yeah. I know. Has convinced you. Um, like, dude. I have I have a I have a question 
the dreams that yeah. you've described so far seem fairly innocuous, like sitting in a oh, classroom yeah, with like, watching a movie. I've I've had that experience too. Were you dreaming my future? Oh, uh, it was like the specific movie is why it was. It was I think the name was Twister, and uh, I missed the day before because I was sick. So I didn't even know that we were going to watch that movie. Um, and unfortunately, it's only been for my future. I haven't had anything for anyone else. It's always from first person point of view. Is, is it is it um, possible that you've experienced a deja vu and then created a false memory about a dream? I've thought of that. I don't know. Uh, that is a possibility. I mean, that's definitely like uh, there's a whole it's deja vu. Oh, yeah. Like that is that is a that is a yeah. thing that we do. Yes, uh, I, I completely understand that. That was another thing that was brought up when I talked to some people on the blog about it. Um, and I will completely say I have no idea if there is an actual cause or if anything is causing it or what. I don't know much about it. Just that these are the experiences that I've had, mm -hmm. uh, and that made me start to believe that the, the deterministic world, uh, well, not hard determinism, but like where we were talking about earlier, where things happen in the past and that influences us. And that would, that those interactions would, and like you said earlier, like the dominoes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. um, what you can do is graph, graph this. Um, and I, I think that's amazing. If you go to the subreddit r slash data is beautiful, uh, people will color graph a year. And all you have to do is if it's a day that, that this event has happened, color it. If not, give it a, you know, a neutral gray if nothing has happened and line out how often it happens. Keep a dream journal. And then when you do that, when you can get some evidence under your belt and some numbers down, that's a really good time because, dude, if you think that you're having premonitions of the future, that has massive effects on the universe and my understanding of the universe that we're in, and I want to know. So keep your dream journal and yeah, call in. I would love to be able to, like, if I can prove this, I would love uh, to be able to study it more. If you could prove this, like you would have work for the rest of your life, even yep. if it's only about your own future. Exactly. Yep. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about that today. And thank you so much for listening and talking to me about this. Yeah. Cheers. Take care, man. Uh, yeah. Thanks. You too. Goodbye. I, I think a dream journal is a good idea, especially because I, I, I have recurring dreams as well. They don't come mm -hmm. true. Um, but there are places that I know I've been before. And I was talking with someone and they asked, well, how do you know that you've only dreamed it once and in the dream you remembered other dreams about it? And that blew my mind. That is, that is stoned inception levels of dreaming right, right there. Right. So if you actually have a dream journal, you can see, oh, I have dreamed this before and not yeah. just in my dream, I think I've dreamed this before. Absolutely. Yeah, because that is what they were describing. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other piece of it is, and I, I'm not throwing shade, self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. You know, if, if you are incentivized to do something um, or you think, okay, this is what I should be doing or, I mean, and then he said to a certain degree of correctness. Mm -hmm. And so if you can kind of hammer on what you did to a degree of what you, yeah. Yeah, especially if, if the things themselves are are not things that would stick out as, as particularly different. Yeah. Mundane. I So... Uh, my roommate and friend, holy Kool-Aid, uh, Thomas Westbrook. Name dropping Oh, here. hell yeah. Uh, he recent, he's been doing videos on psychics. Mm -hmm. um, and he's done a couple videos on psychics who have done like, oh, well, I there's going to be a hurricane uh, along the uh, south coast of the United States around the Gulf area uh, in the next couple of years. There will be earthquakes in California. No. Yeah, I know. Well, tell them to, to and discern also, when the big one is happening. Also, but. there's going to be a celebrity divorce. Mm -hmm. Not not telling you who, but, you know, 
they are, quote, <laughs> sick of the lies. Yeah. And it, you're going to hear about it in a Walmart <laughs> right, aisle. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's just, um, you know, when you, when you do that, um, you, you get the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's another teachable moment. Uh, imagine that you uh, are driving by a barn and you see a bunch of bullseyes. And when you, you, you go up and there is an arrow stuck right in the middle of every single bullseye that's all over the side of this barn. You pull this person out and you say, oh my goodness, how are you that good, that accurate? Please show me. And they say, I can do this every single time. And they come out and they pull an arrow and they shoot the arrow at the barn and then they go get paint and they draw a bullseye around that arrow. It is not fantastic. You've just made that fit for you. That there, There's no, yeah. So... Let's move on to Michelle in California. Michelle, you're talking Hello? to... Hi. 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 Can you guys hear me? Let me actually take off the Bluetooth. I forgot they told me to do that. <laughs> we can hear you just fine. Yeah. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Hi. So, um, I, this is my first time calling you guys, and the thing I wanted to talk about, um, I've watched just the like clips of your show on YouTube and I wanted to get an understanding. I know um, are both of you previous deconverted Christians who are now atheists? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I am trapped. I feel trapped between holding on to my theism but really wanting to kind of, you know, I'm just in a really rough place and I feel like the one topic that has done me in and is doing me in. It's a concept of the dual nature of man, this concept of like having a sin nature. And I feel like the concept is so fundamental to everything that I see in like deconversion talks, like listening to other people's stories. And I guess basically what I was taught is that basically that there's like a nature of man um, and that there's like basically a good side and a bad side and that no human being can avoid having this nature that that is defined as wanting to do its own thing and have its own way not want I guess it's kind of like what the other call, caller was saying about not wanting to submit your will to a greater being Basically, I was taught that that is like the essence of evil. So I had taken, sent some of your shows and some of the other atheist stuff material I've been watching to um, one of the people I know from my old church. And his take on it was, well, I my personality has always been very um, questioning and distrustful and always want to like argue with about the Bible. And he was like, well... Basically, you just have an unsubmissive, disobedient spirit, and that means that you're walking in the flesh and your sin nature is winning, and that anyone who becomes an atheist, basically this person has given in or lost the fight against their flesh and that they're spiritually dead, that basically, like, using, choosing to, like, use your rational mind only is, like, means like you're like walking in the flesh and that you're like spiritually dead. Gotcha. And so I don't know if any of this makes sense or if you ever heard any of these teachings, but it terrifies me because he was like, go back and look at the videos of those people. They're arrogant. They're angry. They're yelling at people. They're all puffed up with pride. You know, none of them are soft and quiet. And that kind of of confirms it. So sorry. (laughs) No, when you go on too much, then we have a hundred great points that we want to bring up mm-hmm. and then we're unable okay. to because okay. we've we've popped <laughs> over like 12 things I wanted to jump in on yeah. and oh, now I'm only going to remember and then I'm only going to remember the last one so let's make sure okay. we're dialoguing back and forth i know it's exciting calling in and all that sure. um did you want to go first uh yeah i remember that stage that was something that was scary for me too because it seemed kind of like they had this all figured out like i went to them and i was like hey i'm questioning things and i am thinking that maybe not everything you're telling me is right. Um, and yeah, they had that answer ready to go. It was, it was, well, this is why. 
And when someone speaks with that kind of authority, especially somebody who you've looked up to as some kind of a mentor, it does definitely impact you and it feels true. Mm-hmm. What I would say now, looking back, people, it's very easy to label a trait you don't like as bad. So if I were one of those angry atheists, which I'm not, I could say, with just as much authority, being submissive and religious is, shows that they have a deviant spirit and that it is, it is wrong and, and they should be ashamed. And you can see when you look at these, these preachers up there yelling and all angry and, and speaking for God that it shows that, you know, you can tell that there's something wrong there. Right? Like, I can choose uh, any trait and say, hey, if you see this trait, that means X. But that's just a claim that they're making. And... uh, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Well, so... so, um, First, I want to tie into the first piece, and that is absolutely understanding where you're at. Um, And one way that I would like to describe it is, Michelle, I owned that accusation. That accusation was given to me, and I took that on myself as, oh, this is part of who I am, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's something wrong with me. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I remember the first time I heard, ever heard somebody say they're breaking your leg to sell you a crutch. <laughs> it was hard for me to believe. Um, but then again, let's take a look at the accusation. So the accusation is this person is angry. Can somebody be angry and correct? You know, I don't think it's the angry, though. Well, and but, I just want to clarify, not to argue. Um, yeah. I think what makes it difficult is that they're postulating a foundation upon which the anger lies. So to me, because in, you know, in Christianity, there can be such a thing as righteous anger. The thing that I can't seem to get around is the why I'm angry. That's the part that, and I don't know if you know what I mean. Like, did sure. you ever wrestle with, like, the reason why you're angry is because you don't have an ability to do otherwise because you're, you are powerless. You're spiritually dead. And unless you grovel around for a God to do something, you're, you're, there's nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't it, know if that makes any sense. Well, it, it, it does. It makes sense. Well, it, in that we've experienced. Right. That. Exactly. Um, so Michelle. Yeah. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. And if you never hear it again, (laughs) then I want to tell you today, you are not broken. And the fact that somebody would do that to tell that to you is, I think, tragic because I don't think they're trying to be hurtful or abusive, but that's the effect. Mm -hmm. When a parent learns uh, from their parents that they need to beat their children to, to teach them, they're not necessarily hating their children. What they're learning is they're learning a behavior that continues to produce pain. And what that person did is inflict pain. It, and but from what there, if that kid grows up and like beats other people. Then because what that's you've what was done to them? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's 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 a perpetuation, right? Um, mm-hmm. What this person has done is they've given you an argument and not a I'm yelling at you argument, but an actual like argument for why they think it is true. And what they did is ad hominem. Instead of talking about the subject, they attacked the person. And they said, this person is not reliable or does not have the truth or is not telling the truth because they are sinful, they are broken, they are, they, they are yearning for, for all of these evil things, right? None of that impacts what we're saying. They're just trying to write you off or write us off because, ooh, I don't like that thing about them. I mean, it's easy to write somebody off. It's really, really hard to talk to them. 
but what if you see that, I guess, are you saying that the behavior or the, it's not even behaviors. I think this is a part, because, like, I've been trying to get resources and, the like, people have given me stuff in atheists, and I've gone on some forums and different stuff, but I think it's not the behaviors or the feelings, but, um, like, I realize, like, a lot of those presuppositionalist stuff is, like, what I grew up under. I didn't realize that it was that's what it was until I heard it, mm-hmm. but kind of like the whole, um, yeah, just kind of like without God, like I can't even like reason, like just the fact that I'm able to even have this conversation means like there must be a God and that's what I've been led to like believe. So kind of like, I don't know how to wiggle myself from Ooh, under absolutely. things. Can, yeah, I can help with that. Okay. Okay. Do we both exist in this world? Are we both what? Are we both existing? Are, are we here? You and I? Am I Am I yes. a, a, a figment of your imagination? Probably not. No. Okay, no. good. So we're, we're there. Can you use logic? Yes. Can I use logic? Yes. There you go. We have now established the foundation <laughs> upon which we can do the rest. Uh, for somebody say, to say that you need to justify logic to use it, is saying you need to be a mechanic before you can drive a car. Right? Oh my God. You need to so be able to um, uh, grow the wheat and mill it and create bread before you can eat it. You can utilize a thing and not understand it and it still work. So what if a person abandons this whole concept of like sin nature and original sin and Mm -hmm. obedience and submission to an invisible power. Like I wouldn't even know where to begin with my own personal struggles, I guess, that led me that I sought Christianity out as an answer for like what you're saying, I guess the broken leg crutch thing. Like Mm -hmm. I, I, thought, I actually kind of thought, okay, basically, I think maybe this will make sense from the rational point of view, and I'm not really good with all these logic, I I haven't never said any of that stuff. I didn't really hear about it. You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing great. But basically, I identified behaviors, feelings, and things in my life that I did not like, and then I came across a philosophy called Christianity that seemed to give a perfect explanation for why, um, just for an example, like binge eating, like I feel like an eating disorder, like I felt that I could not control a behavior that was bringing pain into my life, and so um, basically even like with 12-step, like they all say the same thing, that the reason why a person has destructive or painful behaviors that bring um, suffering on themselves and their fellow beings is because this person is, their soul is unsubmitted to some kind of higher power. This person, they don't want to listen to anybody else, not a path. Sure. They, basically, that they, they, there's something inherent about human beings in general that they don't want to have any kind of authority. So what do you guys think about that concept? Would you agree that there's just something about humans in general no. that we don't want to submit to no. something, whether it's God or not? No. Oh, really? Okay. No. Really? I don't no. think I've ever heard anyone say that. Please no. No, 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 okay. no, 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 I'll tell you why. I will tell you because why. that's what I believe. That's yeah, okay, well, you are wrong. Right that's okay. We're going to fix that right now. <laughs> okay. 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 So let's start with this. If you're going to assume that I just believe in your God and I'm trying to be an asshole about it, there's no reason to talk to you. You've already written me off. And if the idea is to write people off, we can write people off for a whole bunch of reasons. I can give you a bunch of crappy reasons, right? Like the color of your skin. Is that a good reason to write somebody off? No, right? You can assume intentions to somebody that you don't like so that you don't have to listen to them. And that is exactly what that is doing. But to say that it is sinful to what? To like sex? To masturbate? To want to be successful in life? What? What is it? What is it that's sinful that is, that, that, uh, that is being used as a tool of shame to keep you here? Because that's what it is, is it's using shame as a tool to keep you here. What is it? How do you replace it? Does replacing it mean that it was wrong? No. 
But you know what? There is something that you can replace it with. And that is that you are not being told that you have to be a moral person. You're being a moral person because you are a moral person. You're making a choice to live in this world and to love the people that you do and to do the best that you can with it. That's amazing. It's not scary. I know it sounds like it. It's not scary that you don't know because it's giving you permission to learn. And the more that we understand that we don't know shit about most things means that we as a society can pass on to our children the opportunity to learn more. It's wonderful. You don't look so at the you don't look up at the sky and 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 so many people do they feel so small they feel insignificant. Look up at the sky and realize that you're a part of it. It's that easy. So are you saying that you feel like life is just like a big learning experience? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it not? Have you not Um, become a better person in the way that you interact with the world this year than you were last? And if you haven't, why not? I probably haven't. I don't think I have. I've actually had a very... um, a very hard life and I think that maybe just because of how I got my start and with the Christianity stuff gave me an answer like I you know like I mean I just had a really crappy childhood you know I grew up and I went into the foster care system I lived in about 27 different institutions before I turned 18 and so basically I think that if life I guess I guess basically maybe I don't Christianity is has some answers, I guess, that help make some things make sense. But I feel like the other stuff that it requires is so impossible. But I was told, like, I just felt like I tried so hard to be obedient, but not in my behavior. And this is a part, like, I just, if you, anyone you need to speak to this, not in, but in my heart, you know, like, if there's this term where they say I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. I think that's kind of it. And I realized that if there really was a God, I can't fool him by just putting on the show. But deep down inside, I could not, I felt that I was fundamentally flawed because I couldn't, like all these Christians around me would be like, oh, I surrendered. I just had this moment where I just told Jesus to just take it. Whatever you want to do, whatever, whoever you want to marry, I'm just going to give it all to the Lord. And I was like, how come I can't do that? What flaw are you talking about? Something's wrong with me. Give me a flaw. What is wrong with you? What is it? I, I'm, I, I am. This, I have want to. I want to have my own will and my own life, and that's that makes fantastic. It evil because no, it's not. Hold on. Why does that make it evil? <laughs> fantastic. Yes, it's wonderful. It means that I'm gonna go to hell. No, it doesn't. You have to believe in a hell for that to be to 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 go with that. And okay, so first off, you're using good and bad, right? Yes. And and you are equating God with good, the one who created hell, right? Yes. I could not imagine a more sadistic, monstrous thing than the creation of a place where there's eternal torment. Yeah, I think it's it's horrible, and that's why I'm trying to. No, it's horrible of that I God. Don't wanna, no, oh. so that God is a fucking monster. If you believe oh that God. about that God, I that God is a monster. That. Look at Hitler. Hitler didn't didn't finish erasing one group of people, and yet God flooded the earth and killed them all. They fucking succeeded no. in killing every animal and every and every infant in the womb. And yet we look at Hitler as evil, and people look at God as a paragon of virtue. Why? I know, but my friend, my my friend told me when I told her I thought I was becoming an atheist. Like I heard her voice, and she started screaming and crying, and I just. Mm-hmm. She was like, I'm afraid for your soul. Because she loves you. Because she learned that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Do you think that she loves you? I do. But she doesn't know. That's what she's learned. She's still telling you she loves you. Mm -hmm. And perpetuating an abuse. And that's okay. You can say, I love you and I disagree. Because I have to choose between going to hell or trying to have my own life. 
Michelle. And I feel so bad about it because I don't feel like I necessarily want to do like bad things, but I just basically everyone keeps saying to me, they're like, you just want to go your own way, Michelle. You're, 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 you know, and then they're like, oh, well, my friend was like, well, talk to me when you decide to come back to the fold. Mm. And I'm like, I don't, I don't really want to go back but i just feel like the fact that i don't want to go back is evidence that i guess that's what i've been trying to say the fact that i truly deep down inside don't want to go back completely confirms their position in the first place and i don't know how to get out of it sure okay does that make sense it, it does it does and what they've done is said if you're if you if you i'm right and if you disagree with me i'm right Therefore, I'm right. It's 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 a it's a stopgap to stop interacting. In what way could they ever be wrong? I mean, who am I to? I mean, I guess I'll you're Michelle, and that's like, fucking well, who awesome. Are you? <laughs> who am I to question? I mean, I've been doing it, but I just feel it. Like, I'm questioning because, like, all the things that you guys said, like, I thought that stuff, like, the flood and hell and just all this weird stuff in the Bible. But, like I said, when I read, like, I was reading, like, the Romans, and I kept trying to figure out, like, how can I be, how can I walk in the Spirit? How can I stop being, like, this, this disobedient willful woman you know like where i come from like that they say that god values a humble like a humble heart and i guess for me i don't know how a person could have traits like gentleness and humil like humility because i basically they taught I, I what I well, see you're, you're talking is that to it us. seems that the only people who are humble are people who are able to give their will over right. to something greater than themselves, but the people who want to be selfish and live their lives like on their okay. own terms yeah, are Michelle. like evil people. Would okay. you agree with that? Well, no, I'm gonna ask you. You said you've watched our shows. At least a few of them. Yes. Do I fit that description? Well, <laughs> I try not to make snap judgments just from watching a few shows off a of person. Um, you strike me to be just like a regular average person, but what I would say is that if you said to me that you wanted to just live your life on your own terms and not... No, no, hold on, hold on. Like, I'm, 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 yourself that that would mean that you were fundamentally evil at your core even if you weren't doing evil acts on the outside okay so there's a whole lot there and we're, we're, we're doing our best to to break it down um it's going to take a lot of these conversations um please go to the discord um the, dis- okay. the discord is where there are tons of people who go in and talk they're not going to be jerks and if they are let us know <laughs> okay, that's one place I haven't been yet. Yeah. Yeah, definitely go to our Discord. Um, it, when you look at the video, it's right up on the screen right now. Um, there are people who are totally up for talking about this. Um, number one. The idea that religion has a stranglehold on compassion, kindness, generosity, caring, loving and 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 giving this altruism is only owned by religion is incredibly wrong and i know that you're wrestling with it but come on if you think that we haven't given to charity if you don't think we haven't gone out and helped the homeless if you think that we don't as as an organization give tens of thousands of dollars to organizations that can continue to help then you haven't watched enough of our shows because that is what we do. That is not yeah. purely owned by religion. On top of hey, that, right. wanting yeah. to live a happy life. If somebody says that is wrong, run away from that person. You're suffering from being <laughs> in a community that's, that's, that's pushing this on you. And it is tough walking away. That's why we're saying check out the Discord. Mm-hmm. Check out online. I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at a studio audience of people who recognize this very, very well. Well, you live in 2019. We found each other. 
You don't have to do it alone. We're here. Okay, I'll check it out. Hopefully somebody can have something to say about what you just said, and I know you got to let me go, I guess. We do. Just ultimately, I was taught that it doesn't really matter the good things that people do. It's the reason why they do it. So even if an atheist person does all kinds of good works, mm -hmm. the good works are going to be filthy rags because they weren't doing it like from a foundation of Jesus. And I know you sure. probably are going to say that's crazy, well, but I just it's, still it's, it's don't not, know it's how not, to... It's not crazy. It's... That. It's just judgmental and wrong. It's just mean-spirited. How am I going to prove that wrong? If somebody's being a mean-spirited asshole, like if they're saying, well, you know what? Eric went out and dedicated his life to curing a disease, but he didn't do it in Jesus. So really, that wasn't a good thing. Really? No, that's not yeah. how anything works. If they want to do that, they're absolutely welcome to it. But no, that is not convincing. Yeah. Yeah. Big giant hugs from Austin, Texas. We Thank care about you, you so no matter where you come out. My Absolutely. Take your time and it think about really it. Great and talk please. To you guys. Yeah, please. Too. You are not broken. You are not broken. <laughs> I hope that one day I can can discover that. And I'm talking on my phone, so I don't have any screen to hear anything. Um, is the Discord a website, or how can I get that information? You can get it as a an app on your phone. It's also a program on the computer. Um, we okay. have that information up um, on the video, which is go going to be up on YouTube. It's not going anywhere. Um, okay, I'll and go back and look for it. Actually, Thank uh, you. We, 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 hold on, hold on. We just got word from the back room. Uh, we're going to put you on hold, and they'll work, you, well, they'll work with you on it right now. Okay, thank you so much, you guys. You guys are doing good work. I really appreciate it. May, I might call back maybe next month or something to give you an update. <laughs> Please do. I'd love that. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my gosh, I want to give her a hug. <laughs> yeah, none of, none of that was new. Everything that she said was 100% relatable. We've yeah. been there. We've all been there. Yeah. You know, um, I, I was talking to somebody actually not too long ago um, who's in the process of deconversion. And when they said, you know, I'm a Christian and this is how I feel about things. Okay. You know, we, we talked about it. And then the day came where they said, yeah, well, you know, when they talk about Jesus and they talk about, and, and they hadn't realized there was a flip there. There was. Um, you don't have to come to the exact same conclusions as us, but have good reasoning for what you do come to. And for fuck's sake, you've got one life. It's time we stop living it in anxiety and in shame. I'm tired of it. Yeah. What I've learned is if, if there's something that you're afraid of, it's probably a good idea to go towards it because it's it's gonna it's it's gonna you're either gonna figure out that it's valid or that it's hiding something else yeah um in that context yes i will not walk towards a, like an oncoming car well but yes please I'm, please don't i'm not experienced yet to host it so <laughs> I'm just being a butt. I'm just being a butt. But no, yeah, I, I, that, that, that's, that, that's absolutely it. Um, when the biggest changes in our lives come through pain. Um, but you will be better on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And we'll be here waiting. With that said, um, can we take a look at those people in the back room who are making this happen, who screened those callers and gave us that opportunity that we had today? Do we have a camera in the back room? Woo. Can we hear it for our live, or for our crew, <laughs> our crew? Who is alive? Paul, Silas, and Vern. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, live studio audience, thank you so much for coming out. Please stick around because I'm going to be doing my first hosting of the atheist experience in just a little bit. V, thank you for coming out. Thank I really, you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> I know I talked over you a lot. I've got to work <laughs> on that. I do. I do. I will endeavor to do better. We'll discuss. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the love rings. Um, so definitely to those people who are on that other side, you've made the journey and it's lonely. 
Um, and I get it because we all get, we have to go through that individually. But for those of you who don't believe, this is your community. We're making it, we're building it. Because it's not enough that we walked away from it. We still have to populate that life with people who aren't going to be driving that shame and guilt and hurt into you. We can do better. We can do it without the dogma, without the superstition. If you don't believe, you're welcome right here. But if you do, we don't I hate, hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> What are we doing, man? What are we doing? No, 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 you're done.